Hello people and welcome back to my channel. This is the part two video of uh, one of my recent paintings. And I will walk you through it and maybe tie in some loose edges from the last video. So you can find the link to the last video in the description box down below. And I will sum up all of my process for this piece and yeah I hope you enjoy so after I finished the initial sketch and the color study I just move on to this uh, final piece I did think about making it a little bigger but uh, I think I will stick to this size. Uh, it's 25 by 25 centimeters. And yeah. So I first begin by laying down my map, which is the underpainting. I find the underpainting very important because it's like a map of value and of placement of objects so I can see how it will look pretty much in the end result just without the color and I can easily erase I don't have to commit to anything if I wanted to change something from my initial sketch or from my color study I can apply it right now and this is kind of my favorite part of the process I just like, you know, scribbling around with those umbers. And my main colors I use for this um, underpainting are Vendic Brown and Raw Umber with Titanium White or Flake White. I don't remember exactly what I used. And I just map out all of the painting trying to work out the values, the right relationship of uh, size and objects, of values, and etc, etc. And after I lay down all of this, I can proceed to the color stage. Now, back in the day when I started, I really looked hard for finding a process to help me create my own art and not just copy photos or copy other people's paintings or something like that, but really create my own art and understand all the, let's call it fundamental principles, so I can create a convincing picture and a realistic image, because that's where my interest lies. And this is the reason, the main reason why I share, I want to share my process with you guys because back in the day I really looked hard to find any bits of information I could and just tried and tried and tried and I came came across this kind of process that for me really works of course it's always changing and always moving never static I always try new things I always implement new things or discard old things but generally this is what I this is why I started doing it and I want like this is why I want to share so after the underpainting is finished I go around and lay the colors and for the skies I mix some gradients of colors from dark to light from top to bottom of the sky and I lay them down and then blend them with my fan brush I like using the fan brush because it covers large areas and it's soft. Uh, I don't know if it can be done with another brushes. I, I never actually tried so much. I just like the effect that is created by the fan brush. And w when I finish laying the skies, I just go about and start the cloud, which is the main focal area, of course, of this piece. Now, I in this painting, Especially, I found out something that is kind of 
like I had the insight to clouds maybe. I usually painted them and the values, the value structure of the cloud wasn't correct. Uh, I always made it too dark or the, or the contrast uh, inside the cloud way too contrasty. And while I look, looked in, into my uh, reference photo, I just saw that it's much closer in value than I imagined. And I try to stick to it, to not go too dark or too light inside, but just stay in this mid, mid range and look for these subtle variations in value inside the clouds and it it just worked and I, I couldn't be happier with it. So I, I really recommend when painting clouds to just look for the subtle variations of value, not to think about color or, or something like this, but just look inside the cloud for the formation and the value formation inside the cloud, because this really was a game changer for me. So I just build the cloud up just like this until I finish it. I just look for the textures and the tiny details and I continuously blend and soften the edges because, you know, the cloud needs to be far away. So the edges won't be really sharp beside the highlights. So I just blend, blend, blend all the time and soft, soft, soften the all the edges that I can, inside the cloud, outside the cloud, etc, etc. Now for me, clouds are pretty complex and I really recommend doing study of the cloud that you, like if your focal point is a cloud or it's a complex cloud, allow yourself to do a value study and a color study before, just like I did in my previous video. So that's why I, I made it in the first place, those color studies and the value study. Because now I know where I'm going with the colors, with the light effects of light that I'm trying to achieve. And this is why I find them so important, the prior stages. Nowadays, I really try to bring my attention to the value structure of the whole piece because I found out that it's the most crucial thing for any piece of art, like the value structure and how it all sits together with harmony of the tonal range. And I try to create a sense of distance in this mountains, mountain range. So I really muted them and it made them get pushed backwards a lot, which I was really happy with because I never actually managed to make um, this aerial perspective so good. So I really felt like I got the grip of it in this specific painting. And moving on, I can now lay down the, the main values of each each object and then I will proceed to the more constructing of whatever it is that I'm painting stage. I can't stress enough how much the earlier stages of the painting helped me 
be comfortable and confident with this one. Really, I, I used to be so, so in a rush to begin the, the final painting that I, I didn't have the power or the patience to, to do the color studies and the value studies. I just wanted to dive st straight in. And really, because I went through this process already, I feel confident. With my colors, I can push them further because I know my palette that I chose to this painting and the value structure, and I can exaggerate things. And when you're not familiar with the painting that you're about to execute, you might lose hope because of you struggle to create what you want to create. You might make a lot of mistakes, which is good. I, I, I encourage you to make mistakes, I encourage myself to make mistakes, but not so much in, in the final piece. Um, maybe make mistakes in a small scale, small scale first and then proceed after you eliminated most of the mistakes and then you can just, you know, feel more free to, to move inside your painting and, you know, to create whatever you had in mind. Uh, more, more truly. So, this is generally this is my process. I go from sketching in pencil in my sketchbook to creating a color study in a small scale. Then, if I'm working on a large piece, like 70 or 70 or even larger, I will create also a small painting in this size, which. I will call my final color study, maybe, before I'm moving on to the final bigger piece. And yeah, you know, just let yourself have fun. I, I'm talking to many, many artists and they all stress way too much. I stress too, way too much sometimes, but they don't allow themselves to have fun in the process of creation. It's always way too serious. And especially if it's your art, your, your expression, whatever is important to you, please allow yourself to enjoy it and allow yourself to share it with people. I'm not always confident with what I do and my final results or whatever. Uh, but for me, this is part of my art. You know, to, to go against this voice and just share whatever I do. And it teaches me a lot about myself because I create art to learn about myself mostly. I try to see my, tenden my tendencies and my how, how I create in general. Like, do I expect certain outcome? Do I wish for a certain result or do I care what other people will say about my art or do I paint to get some kind of recognition or validation from someone I truly truly try to pay attention to this I encourage you and myself in the same breath to just try to express whatever you want to express or play with whatever you want to play and share it or not share it but do it yeah just do it it's one of the greatest joys and the greatest struggles in life for me and yeah so this was my rambling and i hope you enjoy this video many more to come i will try to be more consistent with the uploads so thank you for stopping by and see you in the next one